He's a convicted felon, a university dropout, and a master of financial shell games. Bankruptcy is alarming to many. To him, it was an opportunity. In the United States, people need cars and credit. He found those who had neither and promised them both. Eventually, after numerous ups and downs throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, he managed to stabilize his company's assets and build one of the most recognizable used car brands in the country and amassed a net worth of $18.4 billion. Keeping his name out of the public eye for many years while dodging lawsuits and indictments as he built his brand, some know this man as a criminal. Others know him as Ernest Garcia II. Money Talks, Wealth Whispers. My name is Connor and I am fascinated by billionaires. How did they get so rich? Why is it so hard to get there? What advice can they give to the rest of us? That's what I'm here to find out. Join me each week as I examine a new member of the world's elite in the hopes of uncovering the secrets to vast wealth and study today's events to grow tomorrow's money. This is Billionaire Brainstorming. Mr. Garcia's career as an entrepreneur has certainly been colorful. In 1990, he was found guilty of bank fraud when Charles H. Keating and his associates were indicted by the state of California on 42 counts related to having duped customers of the Lincoln Savings and Loan Association into buying worthless junk bonds of the American Continental Corporation. Garcia who willingly cooperated with the proper authorities, received a $50 fine and three years probation from the California Supreme Court. Undeterred, Garcia bought Ugly Duckling, a bankrupt and failing rent-a-car franchise for less than $1 million in 1991. This is where he builds his initial wealth. The subprime lending game turned out to be very profitable for Garcia, he sold cars to those with poor credit scores at high interest rates, quickly raising $170 million in the mid-90s after Ugly Duckling released their IPO in 1997. In that same year, there were only eight car lots for Ugly Duckling. However, in 2001, that number had jumped to 77. Unfortunately, Garcia's quick rise to the top was about to be met with detriment, as in late 2001, he was forced to take the company private due to plummeting stock prices after the events of 9-11 that year. Things did not improve for a little while after this, as he frequently ended up in court suffering lawsuits due to questionable financial practices such as using his position in Ugly Duckling to sell 17 of the company's properties to an independent investor group and later leasing them back to the company. Shortly after this, Garcia purchased the properties himself at a 10% discount. However, he did offer the company a chance to purchase the properties from him at the discounted rate, but the offer was rejected since he had reportedly given $7 million of his own money to Ugly Duckling. Not long after going private in 2001, Garcia hired Raymond Fidel, who later became his CEO, who was also involved in the Keating scandal of 1990. Garcia also changed the name of the company to its more familiar alias, DriveTime Automotive. DriveTime operates under the same principles as Ugly Duckling, sell used cars at high interest rates, but lower initial costs to those with poor credit. This model sounds wholesome on the outside, However, some consumer protection advocates argue that companies like this, who both sell used cars and finance them, often put their customers in cars they cannot afford. 
It certainly does not help that DriveTime suffered an enforcement action from the Federal Consumer Protection Agency in 2014, costing them $8 million for, quote, harming customers by making harassing debt collections calls and providing inaccurate credit information to the credit reporting agencies. DriveTime has since modified their practices to meet federal compliance standards. It's been seven years since then, and Garcia, along with DriveTime, seem to be staying out of trouble. So, where is he now? Garcia II is the largest shareholder of Carvana, an online marketplace used for car purchases that is run by his son, Garcia III, who reported revenues of $3.5 billion as of its third fiscal quarter of 2020. Carvana operates under an Amazon.com-like principle in that consumers browse for their vehicles of choice on their website, select them, and file all necessary paperwork without having to leave the comfort of their own home. It is worth noting that Carvana uses the same loan servicer, Bridgecrest, that DriveTime uses to finance their customers' vehicles. So, what does this mean for you? Sometimes it pays more to be financially clever than to be college-educated. A bankrupt business could be your ticket to good fortune. And just because you have a criminal record, that does not mean you cannot succeed in life. That's all for now. So take what we've learned today and look towards tomorrow. And maybe, just maybe, you'll brainstorm your way to a billion dollar idea. This has been Billionaire Brainstorming. Thanks for listening.